Okay, so I've already set up some of the HTML. As you can see right here, I have what will be our navigation, which is an unordered list, and I've already set it up so that it has an ID, which equals nav. If I don't include the ID, everything that I try to do will not work correctly because I'm making this specific to the ID of nav. So I have my regular text right here, and now I'm going to go into my CSS file, and I kind of set it up ahead of time just a few items. So I have nav, regular nav. I have nav li, which is for the little list items themselves. I have nav a, which I've given a text decoration of none, which means if I were to preview this right now and put my cursor over the links, they would not produce any sort of difference. And then I have everything else blank awaiting what I'm going to place in them. So one thing to keep in mind is that with nav A, with that pseudo item right there, uh, anything that I do is going to, in theory, affect a link, a hover. So if I put something here in hover, when I put my mouse over it, of course, it will do something different. So I could put text decoration over line. One thing to keep in mind is that the natural state of an unordered list or an ordered list is to be a block format. And that basically means that it's going to put a line break after each thing. But what we want to do is make it so that each item is next to each other, thus making it a horizontal navigation. So what I'm going to do then is type display colon inline, semicolon. As I click away, we see it as arranging those things in a horizontal manner because there's no break between them. They're bas it's basically stacking them one next to another. Now I didn't put this in the regular nav. You'll notice I did put it in the li because it doesn't work if you put it in the regular nav, which is kind of unfortunate because it would be kind of nice maybe to keep some of those things there, but you can see as I click away because I moved it, nothing. Well, that's okay because we can just go ahead and put that in the li and then it's fine. So now that I've done that, what I want to do is make these a bit more interesting so that they stand out from one another and are really more like navigation rather than just a line of links. I'm going to add a background color. Let's see, how about gray? Semicolon. That adds it to all of those items. These, the text itself is pushing up right to the edge of the box. I want to add some padding so that it kind of spaces out nicely around there. Now we can see that's added a little bit of padding, but it's also introduced a bit of a problem. We can see that even though that background is there, the text is kind of overlapping it. So in that case, we really need to add a margin. But nothing happened. Well, that's kind of one of the quirks here. We can't actually affect the shape of that box like that in the nav A. Unfortunately, we actually have to stick it right in the nav box itself. I know that seems kind of anti-intuitive, and maybe it is. Actually, it definitely is. But it is one of the things that works. I'm actually going to go ahead and make this 20 pixels to move that down a bit more. It's okay to have space between stuff. In fact, it's preferable. You really don't want to have things squished together. Sometimes if you know you have written something correctly, it could just be that you have it in the wrong place. So don't be afraid to kind of move stuff around a little bit. For instance, had you put the display inline somewhere else, maybe it wouldn't have worked quite right if you'd have dropped it down and put it all the way in the hover. So it's okay to move things around. Experiment for science. Anyway, now we have run into the problem of this is pushing right to the top of the page, and we want to give it a little breathing room up there. So I put a margin at the top of also 20 pixels. That affects the whole box area. If I tried to put that into the list area where we have this inline information, it's not going to work. There's a long drawn out explanation for that, but I don't think you really want to hear that, do you? No. Okay, so we have this set up. Now, when we preview it, 
We can see right here that it seems to be working well, but there's no rollovers, which make things interesting. So we have nav A, which pretty much dictates what all of these things are going to look like, but we do want some extra information on the hover. Background color. Now as I roll over, it's very obvious what I have my cursor over. Neat. But there's some other fun things that we can do too. Such as get rid of the space between here and add a border. Did you know you could actually add negatives to things? It's true. Notice as I click away, even though you have negative two, basically it's deleting two pixels off the left side. Oh, and there's two more. Well, if we up those to three, we should be just fine. One of them to three, anyway. Now we can see that that has effectively closed those gaps. We can also add a border to that area, but I think that's something that I would like to leave for you to figure out. One last note, you'll notice that the navigation has quite a space there on the right. Well, if we add margin left and right to auto, which should center it, something else happens. Nothing. Oh no, what do we do? Well, that's because we actually need to set a width for this nav area. So I'm going to say 600 pixels. Notice that it moved it over. Now, here's the thing. If I make it smaller than the actual content, then we start to get some funky things going on. So that's something you're just going to have to eyeball, frankly, or do some maths. I'm sure there are a lot of videos on that if you need some assistance.